What's going on everybody? It's Mr. Cruz. In this video, you're going to learn how to use a website called flat.io. F-L-A-T.io. A link is in the description below. Go to that website. Flat.io is free music notation software. Now, what is music notation software? Well, it's basically like the Google Docs or the Microsoft Word of um, for music. So, um, in, for example, in Microsoft Word or Google Docs, you write your assignments in there, you type your assignments in, you do your essays and your reports, and you print it all out, okay? In flat.io, you put your music in like this. You put your sheet music into the computer. And there's a lot of things you can do with it after you put sheet music in. So, um, flat.io, um, it's like a music notation processor. Anyway, so get signed up, get registered. Um, you can use any email address you like, um, and it's free. Nothing to pay for unless you really want to pay for it. So what are we going to do? We're going to recreate this PDF that you should already have. We're going to recreate this entire PDF and then put it into flat.io. All right, so um, with, and by doing so, you're going to get used to the features and how all of it works. So let's get started. Um, by this time, you have already registered and signed up, and you should look for this button here called New Score or Tab. If you don't see that down here, it's probably on the right side, or it's in My Library. So let's click on My Library, and then click on New Score or Tab. It's either here in the middle or here on the right side of your browser. So let's click New Score or Tab. Because this is an assignment, you um, have to put your name on it. So let's just title this new score um, your name. So I'm going to put mine, and you put yours. And let's click Continue. The next thing that you need to do is add your instrument. So um, whatever instrument you play, you add it. So I'm just going to do this for, um, I don't know, I'll do this for flutes. Okay, so if you play the sax, you put the saxophone in, all right? So let's put in, click woodwind because I want to add a flute, all right? Our other instruments that read in treble clef will be um, our brass instruments like trumpet and French horn. So we're going to need to go to the brass instruments here. Okay, and this is how you had, this is how you add horn to your part or trumpet, okay? If you play percussion, you're going to do um you're gonna do where did it go where did it go i think it's gonna be keyboards keyboard percussion all right um you could do piano if you want and just fill in the treble clef or you could go to pitch percussion and you can add xylophone vibraphone marimba any one of these okay xylophone vibraphone marimba glockenspiel or that those are your bells all right Okay, so um, we're going to do this for flute, but then you could do this for your instrument, okay, because this is all treble clef. All right, so once your instrument has been added, click on Create. And now you are in the main editing window or editing interface of flat.io, all right? So, um, like I said, you should already have the PDF printed or downloaded on your computer because you're going to be putting all of these things that are down here in the PDF into flat.io. All right, so let's take a tour of flat.io really quick. Up here, you have your menu toolbar or your menu tools such as note, articulation, ornament, dynamic, measure, and text. Okay, now over here next to notes, it's supposed to be document, your document tools. If you don't have document tools up here, well, then they're automatically up here in the upper right of your internet browser. Okay, the reason why they're not here is maybe because you have a smaller, like maybe you're using a laptop and then your browser isn't um, wide enough. And so the internet, or sorry, these document tools show up under this. So all you have to do is click on document tools and then you have these icons that will show up. So under your document tools, it's just like a word processor. You have your undo and redo 
cut, copy, and paste, saving your work, zooming in, zooming out. Those are the most important ones we're going to be using in um, flat.io. After notes, uh, after document, you have your note tools, which is where you're going to spend most of your time. Okay, so that's where you put in your flats, naturals, uh, and sharps, your accidentals. This is where you select your uh, note values, and then you put them into the staff. The dot tool, which we're going to talk about. Um, triplets, we're not going to talk about triplets. Okay, and then there's other tools here um, that, you know, we're not going to really talk about. One of the tools we're going to talk about is the transposing tool. Okay. And then, um, like I said, if your browser isn't wide enough, you might see three dots here for, um, for more tools or more features. If you're not seeing what I'm talking about, they're probably under the, um, excuse me, they're probably under the more, more tools or more features section. There's going to be three dots. You just need to click those three dots and then those um, options will appear. Okay, next is articulation. Okay, this is where you can have staccatos, accents, fermata, slurs, breath marks. Okay, ornaments. We're not going to be talking about ornaments, but these are your ornaments, like tremolos, glissandos. Okay, dynamics. We're going to be talking about these crescendo, diminuendo, um, forte, mezzo forte, piano. Measure tools. We're going to be talking about that. Okay, how to add measures, because sometimes, you know, it doesn't automatically add measures when you want to. So we need to be able to add measures. System breaks. Okay, system breaks are very important. Okay, you'll notice in the PDF in the first line, there are four measures. Okay, and we're going to need to use the system break tool to make sure that we stick to four measures per line. Um, look at this line right here. One, two, three. The fourth line of your PDF, you only have three measures. Okay, so we're going to use a system break tool to make sure that in the fourth line, we only have three measures. In the measure tools, you also have the ability to change the clef, key signature, and time signature. Adjust the tempo. Put in rehearsal letters or text, which we're going to talk about. Your bar lines. Repeat signs. Um... Roadmap directions like Dalsenio and Codas, Fine, DS, DC, first and second endings. All right. And then the text tool. We're not going to really talk about the text tool, but this is if you want to add lyrics to a song or chords um, or uh, specific musical instructions or annotations. Okay. So that is, th those are the main menu tools that we're going to be talking about. You're going to be going up here frequently and choosing those things to add them to your music. Um, all right, the next most important feature you need to be aware of is this teardrop tool right here. Okay, wherever that teardrop or water droplet is, is what gets changed or affected in flat.io. So you need to be constantly aware of this. I'm going to be constantly talking about this um, uh, teardrop tool or teardrop cursor in flat.io um, because it's so important. And if that teardrop cursor is somewhere else, um, you're going to be making a lot of changes that you don't want. Okay, so you have to be very aware of this teardrop cursor. Okay, next is um, let's look at the PDF. So again, like you're going to rec you're going to recreate this music that's down here. You're going to recreate all this music that's down here in the PDF and import it one note at a time, one symbol at a time into flat.io. You're noticing here that I have a list called workflow. Okay, workflow is basically a checklist or a to-do list of things that you're going to do. Now, the reason why you want to have workflow is because if you try to do everything one note at a time, if you try to do everything one note at a time, one piece at a time, one sharp, one accidental, one crescent, one little itsy bitsy piece at a time, it's going to take you forever to finish. All right, so you want to break it down into concepts. Also, if you don't have a workflow and you're just trying to put things into the staff, into your music, uh, you're going to forget stuff. Okay, so it's very important that you just do things one thing at a time. For example, let's worry about bar lines after we've done everything else. You know, let's worry about bar lines after we've done repeats and slurs and all that. Okay, so make sure you have this PDF ready and let's get started.
So, workflow, part one. We, we are starting at the very beginning of a song, okay? And so we need to make sure that the clef, key signature, and time signature are correct. So, first things first, clef. Okay, make sure you're reading the correct clef. So you bet you you better make sure it says treble clef. Now, if you play the flute, oboe, clarinet, saxophone, trumpet, or percussion, um, mallet percussion, your clef should automatically be treble clef. But if you did if you did want to change it, okay, you can click the clef sign and change the clef to what you want to make the make yourself or the musician read in. But the clef is already by default the appropriate clef for the instrument. You should not have to change that. The next thing is key signature. Okay, you need to make sure that the key signature is no sharps, no flats. If you want to change the key signature, there are two ways to do that. You can put your mouse like right here between the clef and the time signature and click around until this window shows up with other key signatures. So let's say I wanted to have five sharps in my key signature. I click on it and there you go. Your key signature has been changed. You can click the key signature again. Again, it's between the clef sign and the time signature. You can click the clef sign again and change it back. Okay, so I just changed it back to no sharps, no flats, like it says in the uh, PDF. Another way to change the key signature, all right, is to go to your measure tools. And by the way, make sure your cursor, your teardrop, is in the right, is in the measure you want to affect the key signature in. Click on measure. Then go here to the key signature tool and then change the key signature. So let's say I wanted to change it to four flats. There you go. All right. We can change it back and click measure, click key signature, and let's go back to no sharps, no flats. And there you go. And then the next thing you want to make sure that you have correct is the time signature. So these are the things that you got to do in the very beginning of your um, of your work. Um, because if if you don't have the right thing, if you don't write, have the right key signature or time signature, and you start putting notes in, uh, it's going to be wrong. And you, if you try to play along with it, it's like you're not going to have a good time. So make sure all these things are correct, so that you're not adding more work to your composition or your workflow. Okay, so time signature, it's the same exact way of changing time uh, key signatures and clefs. So click on the key signature. Or this is the time signature, sorry. Click on the time signature here, and then you have a menu of time signatures to choose from. Okay, so two, four time. Or um, common time. Common time is the same as four, four. The other way to change your measure, uh, your time signature is to go to measure tools, go to the time signature tool here, and the same window shows up. Okay, so now you know two ways to do key signature changes and time signature changes. All right, so let's set our time signature to 4-4 four, four because that's what we need. All right, so we are, we're good for this as of right now, okay? Next, we got to go into pitches and rhythms, all right? So we need to go first to note, the note tools up here. And we're going to, and pitches and rhythms is where you're going to spend the most time when you're editing and creating your music, pitches and rhythms, okay? Um, so let's get started. Now, uh, if you've noticed, uh, all this music here is um, all this music here is just chromatic scales. This is all chromatic scales. Okay, so um, we're going to be putting these in. I like doing chromatic scales because it takes care of all of the notes that sh you got to be able to put into flat.io. So um, pitches and rhythms. Let's go. We're going to start here. Measure one. Go to our note tools. Because our first note is an eighth note, okay, we have to click on eighth note. So go to your note tools, click on eighth note, all right, and then start putting the notes in. So how do you put notes into the staff? The, there are two ways to put notes in the staff. You can click the note into the staff with your mouse or your trackpad on your laptop. Okay, there you could click the note in or you could press the letter of the note on your computer keyboard. So if, if the next note we want to put in is a B, okay, we can, oops, we can press the letter B on our computer keyboard, all right, and then the letter shows up. Okay, see how that works? Let's say I want to put a C over here, 
Okay, I just pressed C on my computer keyboard. Let's put a D over here. Press put press D on my computer keyboard. All right, and then that those notes show up. I prefer to um, I prefer to click the note into the staff. Okay, and that's what I'm going to be doing throughout the video. I prefer to click the note into the staff because when I type the note into the staff using my computer keyboard, sometimes it the note gets placed in the wrong octave, and then it's another couple more steps to change that note. So uh, I prefer to click the note in. If you make a mistake, okay, like clicking the note in, you can move the teardrop cursor over using your keyboard arrow keys, your computer keyboard arrow keys, and then you can press up or down to adjust the note. So I'm going to press down, and then this D will go down to the B. Okay, so... There we go. All right, so um, you, you can use your arrow your arrow keys on your computer keyboard to change the notes. <coughs> All right, so let's keep going. I'll move my teardrop cursor over here. Actually, let's back up. So our first note is not an A, by the way. The first note's an A sharp. Okay, so oh, when you put the first note into flat.io, okay, you click the note in, all right, you have to make sure that the teardrop cursor, all right, is under the note you want to change, okay? Because we need to make this A sharp. Our teardrop cursor is set, okay? Go to your note tools and then click sharp. And then now you have an A sharp. You have the sharp right next to the A, just like this one right here in our PDF, okay? All right, so the next note's a B. We're going to move our teardrop cursor over. And I'm going to click B into the staff. The next note is C. Click C into the staff. My teardrop cursor is in the right place. C. The next note we want is C sharp. Click C sharp. C into the staff first. Move the teardrop cursor over the C. And then click sharp. Because we want to add, we want to make the C sharp. The next note is D. Click D into the staff. The next note is D sharp. Click D first into the staff. Move the cursor over. And then click sharp to make that D sharp. Let me make the volume on my computer a little bit louder. Okay. Let's move the cursor over after D sharp is E. So this is just a chromatic scale. After E is F. After F is F sharp. Move the teardrop cursor underneath the F. Press the sharp sign up here under your note tools. Click sharp, and now that's F sharp. After F sharp is G. Let's move the cursor over. G. Next note is G sharp. Move the teardrop cursor over and click G sharp. All right. Um, I'm always checking when I'm doing this. I'm always checking that my teardrop cursor is in the right spot. I'm always also checking that I have the correct note value selected before clicking the note in. Okay, if you're not aware of these things, you're going to be clicking in the wrong note value. All right, so after G sharp is A, after A is A sharp. To make this A sharp, let's move the cursor over underneath the A and click sharp. And now it's A sharp. Okay, actually, this is a half note A sharp. All right, so let's erase that. Okay, you can hit, you can erase the note by click, uh, pressing backspace on your computer keyboard. Okay, and it goes away, or you can undo. Okay, by pressing Command Z or Apple Z on a Mac. For a PC or Chromebook, you can press Control Z, or you can go to your Document Tools, which are up here or under the Document menu, and click Undo. All right, I had to undo a couple of times. So we need to put a half note here. All right, so my cursor is set. Click half note and go click in an A. This needs to be A sharp. Move the teardrop cursor over underneath the A and click sharp. And there's your A, there's your A sharp. All right, we need to start descending, okay?
we need to start descending so we need to move our teardrop cursor over here okay because if we start clicking notes up here this is what gets affected all right so let's move the teardrop cursor over to the next measure and let's put b flat into the staff so i'm going to check my note be in my note menu click eighth note and then put click in the b all right we need this to be a b flat so i'm going to move my cursor over and then click flat up here all right the next note's an a eighth note always double checking that teardrop cursor move the cursor over a next note's a flat move the teardrop cursor underneath the a and click flat always making sure my teardrop is underneath the section i want to change after a flat is g then g flat f e e flat teardrop cursor move it over click flat d d flat c eighth note b eighth note and then over here after b eighth notes b half note b flat half note Okay, so we want to move the teardrop cursor over here, move it over to the B, and click on the flat sign. All right. So that is the first line of music. Okay. Next line. Next line over here. We're going to do this C chromatic scale in quarter notes. Okay. Now, you're, you're probably noticing there's a lot of stuff like, what about the crescendo and the accents and the forte? and all? No, 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 no. Let's make sure we're following our workflow. All right, trust me on that. Okay, next is our C chromatic scale, measure five. Measure five is down here, okay, in the second line. So we need to start putting a C chromatic scale. The nice thing about this is all quarter notes. So I'm going to move my teardrop cursor over here. All right, I move my teardrop cursor by clicking into the staff. So next, C, C sharp. Let's make that sharp. Uh, put the teardrop cursor over and click sharp. After C sharp is D, then D sharp, E, <coughs> F, F sharp. Move the teardrop cursor over because we want this to be an F sharp. Click sharp. Move the teardrop cursor over again because we want to put a G here. Next is G sharp. After G sharp is A. Oh, what happened? Okay. G sharp, A. A sharp. Then B. And over here, we want to put a whole note C. Okay, so I'm going to go to my note tools, click on whole note, and click the C into the staff. All right, next line. Now you have your C chromatic scale descending. All right, so let's click on C, B, B flat. Change that B to a B flat. So cursor is set on B. Go to your note tools and click flat. B flat. Move the cursor over. A. A flat. G. G flat. We need this G to become a G flat. So let's move the cursor over here. Go to your note tools. Click flat. F. Move the cursor over because we want F to be affected over here. Not over here. Over here. E. E flat, then D, D flat, move the cursor over to affect this note to make it D flat, and then the last note is a C, low C. Okay, so that is the chromatic scale 
second line of the C chromatic scale. All right, next is measure 13. Um, you're noticing that measure 13 is down here in the fourth line, okay, and that's where you should be. Let's start throwing notes in. Okay, so we have here a dotted quarter note, okay? Now, how do you make a dotted quarter note in flat.io? Well, first, it's a, it's a quarter note, okay? So let's go to Note Tools, click on Quarter Note, and click G. Okay, to make this G a dotted quarter note, let's move the cursor over to the G. Okay, once the cursor is underneath the note you want to change, G right here, go to your note tools, go to dot, and click on the single dot right here. You have this other option to make a double dot. We're not going to be doing that. Let's go to dot, single dot up here. And there's your dotted quarter note. Okay, so it's kind of like a two-step process to get a dotted quarter note here. All right, after G, move the cursor over. We want to put an A eighth note or G sharp eighth note right here. So click eighth note, click the G. We need this to be G sharp, so let's move the cursor over and then click sharp. After Okay, after G sharp is A, we want A to be right here. So let's move the cursor over. And again, I use I move my cursor over by pressing the arrow keys on my on my keyboard. After G sharp is A. This A needs to be a dotted quarter note, so let's move the cursor over to this A. Go to my note tools, click on dot, and now you have a dotted quarter note A. After A is an A sharp in this eighth rest here, we need to make that an A sharp. So let's move the cursor over, click eighth note, and click A. All right, so I made a mistake. I clicked in the wrong spot. Let's move the cursor over to this note. I'm going to use my arrow keys to adjust the note to the A. Now that my cursor is over here on the A, I can make that A sharp. Okay. After A is B, we want B to be in the next measure. So I'm going to move my cursor over. And it's going to be a B dotted quarter note. So let's make it quarter note first, B. After B, after uh, after you click the B into the staff, move the teardrop cursor over, click the dot, and now you have a dotted quarter note B, just like what you have here in the um, in the PDF. After B is C, we need the C to go here, so let's move the cursor over. After that, so click eighth note in your note tools. Make sure this is C. After C is C sharp. It's a quarter note C sharp, dotted quarter note C sharp. So let's click quarter note first, click the C into the staff, move the teardrop over and click sharp. Now we have C sharp. The teardrop is still here. Click the dot. Okay. After C sharp is D. Oops. Now look what happened here. Um, I did not move my teardrop cursor over to the next note and I clicked one of these note values and because the teardrop cursor wasn't on the right spot as soon as I clicked one of these note values the C sharp that was supposed to be a dotted quarter note got changed okay so there's two ways around this you can undo okay by click by pressing Apple Z or command Z on your Mac or control Z on a, on a PC so I'm gonna undo it by hitting control or app I'm, I'm going to undo it first, okay? You can also go to your uh, note tools and press undo over here. And there we go. Now that's C sharp, okay? Um, the other way to do that, we had this earlier, right? Another way to do that is to make sure if you want to change this eighth note to a quarter note, go to your note tools and click quarter note. And then go to the dot click dot okay so now you just figured out two ways how to change a note on the spot okay after C sharp is D eighth note okay our next four eighth notes D sharp E F and F sharp okay so let's click those in D sharp E F and then F sharp we need this to be F sharp. Let's move the cursor over. Make sure we're in our note tools and click sharp. And then after F sharp is G. We want put we want to put G over here. So my cursor is set. Okay. And it's going to be a G half note. 
All right, and there you go. So that is all the notes in measure 13, 14, and 15 on the fourth, uh, on the fourth line. Now you're seeing right here that there's this extra measure, measure 16. It needs to be down here in the next line, okay? So measure 16, we need to push it down here underneath measure 13. So how do we do that? We set our cursor, our teardrop cursor in the right spot. We go to measure tools, and then we click on system break. Okay, now what is a system? Okay, a system is a line in music. Okay, for example, in this PDF, okay, we have one, whoops, we have one, two, three, four, five systems of music in this PDF, five systems. All right, um, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to put measure 16 into the fifth system rather than the fourth. So how do we do this? We t get our teardrop cursor, go to measure, all right, and because we want this measure to be affected, okay, our teardrop cursor is underneath measure 16, and then click measure and then click system break. All right, um, now why is it called a system instead of a line? Well, there's so many lines in music already. You have, um, you have measure lines, bar lines, um, staff lines, ledger lines ledger lines are those extra lines that are above and below the staff like this right here uh there's so there's so many lines in music so that's why it's called a system all right let's keep going um next we have eighth notes and eighth rests okay so let's start clicking those in let's go back to our note tools click on eighth note and here we go g this needs to be an eighth rest so let's leave that alone let's move the cursor over all right, we need to put eighth notes here, so we have to make sure that we're in eighth note again. Click eighth note. This needs to be G flat. Let's move the cursor over to change it to G flat. Okay, so move the cursor over and then click flat under your note tools. This is already an eighth rest. We need to put F over here. Click eighth note. So we could put an eighth note in. Eighth rest already over there. Move the cursor over. Let's put an E eighth note into the staff so skip skip this one eighth rest e and this is an eighth rest already okay now we have run into a little tiny roadblock all right we need to add two more measures to our staff all right our music isn't adding in more our flat.io is not adding any more measures and that's fine so we got our teardrop cursor here at the end of the measure click on measure and then click on insert measure after Okay, and we need two more measures, so I'm going to click that again. And there you go, we're set. And then we have eight eighth notes in the second to the last measure. So let's move my teardrop cursor over. Okay, and then we got to put an E flat. Let's go to our note tools, click eighth note, E flat. Okay, so this needs to be E flat. Highlight the note with the cursor, click flat, E flat, D, D flat. C, B, B flat. Let's select this B to make it B flat. Next is A. Move the cursor over. I actually, I actually just moved the cursor over by clicking into the staff. A, A flat. I'm gonna select this A to make it A flat. The teardrop cursor is set. A flat. All right, and then the very last note, congratulations guys and gals, the last note's a G whole note. So let's set the cursor over, okay, and then click whole note and press G. Okay, so, and then, um, but, uh, and for some reason, um, flat.io doesn't know that you're done. So let's take, let's get rid of this measure. Let's put, let's make sure the cursor is set underneath this last measure that flat.io created. It might happen to you or it may not. Go to measure and let's go to remove measure right here bam all right so you are done with a bulk of the work in flat.io okay um <clears throat> you are you are done the next step is after pitches and rhythms is articulation now your articulation okay will be your staccatos and accents and all that stuff. Okay, so let's start first with staccatos. We have staccato here. We have accents and staccatos 
in measure five and six. Okay, I don't think we have anything else anywhere. Okay, so measure five and six. So we have accents in measure five. So let's throw those in. Let's move our cursor over. Let's move our cursor over and then let's start clicking accent. Okay, move the cursor over, accent. And there you go, we've just put accents. Let's move to the next measure because we need to put staccatos. Let's move this over, staccato. I can also move the teardrop cursor over using my computer keyboard arrow keys. Click staccato. Okay, and that's how you put in our, um, those articulations. There's other articulations that we haven't gone over yet, which is fine. <laughs> Okay, after um, articulations is slurs. Let's start throwing slurs in. So we have, let's look at our PDF. Okay, we have one, two, three. We have four sets of slurs to throw into our music. Okay, so we have over here in measure, uh, measure seven, we have G sharp slur to A. So let me move my teardrop cursor over to the G sharp and then click on slur. All right, and then G sharp gets slurred to A. Now, um, flat.io automatically slurs to the next note only. Okay, it always does that. And we're going to show you a little bit more after that. We need to slur the A sharp here to the B. So let's put our teardrop cursor underneath the A sharp and click slur. All right, now the slurs, not the most perfect thing in the world okay it's uh, flat.io has its quirks so this slur over here it goes above above the notes but flat.io wants to put the slur below the notes which is fine you're not going to get penalized if um, the slur looks different than the PDF as long as I see a slur there you're good all right the next set of slurs is in measure 9 okay and we got to slur the C to the A all four quarter notes in measure nine. So let's move our teardrop cursor over here. Okay, moving our teardrop cursor over here and then click slur. And if you remember what I said earlier, the slur always, a uh, flat.io always slurs by default to the next note. You'll notice that the slur comes with these two circles over here. Those are called your handles, okay? And you can click that handle and adjust the slur left and right. So now you could slur an entire measure, specific number of notes. Okay, we just want to slur to the A over here. Okay, so now you've slurred four quarter notes. And the next slur, A flat to F. Let's move the teardrop cursor over. All right, click on slur, move, adjust the length of the slur. All right, and, and flat.io, they're slurring the four quarter notes above the staff. In my PDF, the slur is below the staff, and this is fine. If it looks like that, you're okay. All right, slurs. Next measure, number five, is repeats. So we have a repeat sign in measure seven and eight. So we need to repeat measure seven and eight. So let's move our teardrop cursor to measure seven. I just clicked to move the teardrop cursor to measure seven. Let's go to measure tools and then click on left repeat. We want this, we want this repeat right here and we want it to be right here. Okay, and then at the end of measure eight, there's a at, at, after the whole note, there's another repeat sign. Okay, so let's move our teardrop over here and click on right repeat. And now you have repeated measure six and seven in your music. All right, cool deal. Next, after repeats are bar lines. Okay, if you've noticed at the end of the first system, at the end of the third system, we have these double bar lines. Okay, so we want to throw those in. So let's go to let's go to measure four over here. Okay, I like clicking the last half note here and then click on bar double bar line. And there you go. All right, let's go to the third system. Okay, that's measure twelve. Click on this whole note C and click double bar line. And there you go. Your bar lines have changed to look just like mine. All right. Next, dynamics. Dynamics are your fortes, pianos, crescendos, diminuendos. So let's work with dynamic symbols first, the forte and the piano. Now, um, we don't have any other dynamics anywhere else, which is fine. We just got to put these two in. So we have to put a forte 
underneath this high B flat. So let's go here. Let's move the teardrop cursor over here to high B flat. Let's go to dynamic. Click on dynamic tools and then click on Forte. Now the reason why the Forte showed up here is because that's where the teardrop cursor is. All right. And then over here we have a half note B flat. Okay. That needs to be piano. So let's put piano. The teardrop cursor is set in the right spot and let's click piano. And there you go. There's the piano symbol. All right. After that are crescendo and diminuendo markings. Okay. So let's, um, we have a crescendo here in measure two. We want this to be, we want this crescendo to go the whole measure. So I'm going to set my teardrop cursor underneath this F sharp over here. And I'm going to click on crescendo. And there you go. You'll notice that, let me move the teardrop cursor out of the way. You'll notice that the, when you select the crescendo, again, it has handles so that you can adjust the length and the width of the handle. All right. And this is perfect. Next, we want the crescendo to go from this A, uh, from this A over here in measure three, all the way to the piano symbol. All right, so let's select this A over here and click on diminuendo. All right, let's move the teardrop cursor out of the way. Okay, select the decrescendo and let's move it really close to the forte like this. Select it again, move it really close to the piano. Oops. All right, and then now we've got our crescendo diminuendo. Now this is not perfect, okay? Like we have the crescendos up here and then the diminuendos down here. That's fine, okay? It's not a big deal. You could do this. Let's make this shorter. Move the teardrop cursor over here and then click piano, okay? You could do that if you want, not, not mandatory. All right, so it's a little bit off. Again, flat.io has its quirks. It's not exactly perfect. But it's, it's a great program still. All right, crescendo diminuendo, we just did that. Next, transposing and changing octave. Okay, now this is really important. Now, if you are a flute player and you're looking at this and you're like, how do I play something like measure five? This is, this is, way, this is way too low, okay? Um, this is where transposing comes in. Now, what is transposing? Transposing is when you take a collection of notes Okay, and you change all of those notes, a specific uh, interval, all at the same time. Okay, so we could transpose this a major second up or a perfect fifth up, or in this case, we want to change it up one octave so that this is a little bit more playable for flutes. Okay, or uh, maybe saxophone players. All right, so how, how do we transpose measure five? Okay. Um, change it up an octave. So what I'm going to do, oops. All right. So I made a mistake. Let me hit undo. What I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight. I'm just going to click up here, click, drag, and highlight all these notes. Okay. As a matter of fact, let's cl click, drag, and highlight measure five through 12 because that's what we want to, that's what we want to transpose. All right. Go to your note tools and then go find this icon here called transpose. The transpose icon has the accidental, the note head, and these double-headed arrows. If you don't see this, you probably have a transpose button under the three dots. So click the three dots first, and then find the transpose tool, okay? So highlight, drag, click drag and highlight all these measures. Click on transpose, all right? The interval will be, don't worry about interval, quality is perfect, octave, you want to change it one octave up. You want to change it one octave up, okay, and apply transposition. And there you go, measures 5 through 12 just moved all up one octave. So now, flute players, this is a little bit more playable, right? Now, if you are a clarinet player and you're like, I don't know these notes, these, are, these notes are way too high. All right, again, highlight the notes you want to change. Go to your transpose tool, which is under your note menu. 
Note Tools menu, click on Transpose. Again, if you can't find the Transpose tool, look for the three dots, okay, where it should see, give you more options, okay, and then you should find this tool. Transpose, we want to change it one octave down, okay, and then apply transposition. And now that's back to normal, okay. <laughs> Uh, let's see, and then, so that's how you transpose and change octave, okay? So if something is way too high or too low for you, that's what you do. You don't, you don't want to go through every note and then, you know, and you don't want to go through every note and use your arrow keys to adjust every note. Highlight the notes you want to change, like this one. I want to change this one. Go to my transpose octave, change it one octave going down, apply. And that C right here that was up there is now down here. Okay. So flute players, um, flute players, if you want to change this, okay, go ahead and change this an octave if you like. Um, percussion, percussion, this is probably way too high for you to play on your mallets. So I'm going to highlight this. Okay, go to my transpose, go to octave, change it to one, and click down. And now you have notes in your range to play your chromatic scale. All right. I'm going to hit undo because I don't want to, you know, this is too low. I'm going to hit undo. So now percussion, you know how to change that. Uh, trumpets, this is way too high for trumpet. Okay. This is way too high for trumpet. So same thing. Highlight this. Go to octave and click down. Uh, octave, make sure it's one, okay? And apply transposition. And there you go. So now that's in the more of the range for a trumpet, okay? I'm going to hit undo again. All right, so that's how you change octave. So we taught you guys how to change octaves for every instrument in case you know, you're know you copying this. If you're copying all this and you're like, yeah, I wanna play that, but this is way too high or too low, now you know how to do it, okay? All right, we're almost done. The next thing we need to do is label uh, what we're about to play. So we're gonna talk about how to add text, okay? Um, instructional text. So we want our instructional text to be in the beginning of each of these measures, like this measure right here, A sharp, B flat chromatic scale, C chromatic scale, G chromatic scale. All right, so we want to change this, okay? We want to put text right here. We want it to start here on the A sharp, all right? So I'm going to move our teardrop cursor over. Let's go to um, measure tools, and then go here to rehearsal. Click on that, and then click on text. And then you can write in what you want. So we're going to call this A sharp B flat chromatic scale. A sharp slash B flat chromatic scale. And then press add. There you go. Now you've labeled this scale. We want to label the scale for measure five, which is your C chromatic scale. So let's move the teardrop cursor over. All right. We want to put text here, so our teardrop cursor is here. Let's go to Rehearsal. It's under your measure tools. Click on Rehearsal, then click Text. Let's add C. Come on, I can't type. C chromatic scale. Press Add, and there you go. Now you've labeled measure five. These next two lines as your C chromatic scale. All right, next we want to put a G chromatic scale. We want to add that text to measure 13, the beginning of measure 13. So let's press, let's uh, move the teardrop cursor over here. Click on measure, go to rehearsal, click on text, and let's type in G chromatic scale. Press add, and there you go. All right, you guys, congratulations. If you followed along every step of the way, we are done. The next thing to do is to save and or print your work. So how do you do that? Okay, so under your document tools, mine are already showing up here, but click on document, and then you're gonna to wanna to find the printer icon right here. So click that, 
and click Start Printing. Uh, for most computers, a dialog box from your computer should show up asking you how you'd like to print it. Okay, so you can send it to your printer if you want to print out a copy. Okay, you could save it as a PDF. Okay, so let's click Save as PDF, and then you can title it. So when you save it as PDF, you could title it your name. So press that and click Save. Okay, and now we'll go to your computer's hard drive, and it will save as a file. And what you could do is you could take that file and attach it to your Schoology assignment, or you could take that file, attach it to an email address, uh, attach it to an email, and then email it to me. The other option that I've never seen before, but happens to show up in here, is to save to Google Drive. Okay, so you can do this. Click Save to Google Drive, click Save. All right, and because I'm already logged in to my Gmail account, okay, um, it got saved to my Gmail account. So you gotta find that file, all right, and then um, get the link of that file and then share it with me to my district email. All right, let me click Start Printing again. There was one more option. Okay, th those are all the options. So that's what happens when you click on the printer icon. The other way to save your work is to go to the cloud with the down arrow and then click on Printable PDF. Okay, don't worry about these radio buttons. These um, symbols right here are for the premium features. Okay, don't worry about that and click Export. And as you can see right here, it's getting saved to my computer hard drive as a file. Uh, now, by default, all my files, anytime I download something from the internet, all my files get saved to my desktop. Okay, so now what I can do is take the file, same thing, drag it to Google Drive, drag it to an email and send it or, or attach it to a Schoology message or uh, use that to submit a Schoology assignment. Okay, so now you know several ways to save your work. So let me click on this. And uh, because we're using the free software, it's automatically going to put, um, oops, it's automatically going to put um, this watermark or created with the free version. So it, it, when you pay, when you're a subscriber to the website, um, this goes away. All right. So we're, we're done, guys. All right, um, and this is how you submit your work. Now, I love music notation software. I've been using music notation software longer than you guys have been alive. I'm talking to middle schoolers. <laughs> um, and um, I remember you taking music notation software, okay? Um, and um, I remember going home from band class or coming home from school. I would take my band music, I'd put it into music notation software and I would play along with it. I would have like a practicing guide. Um, so this is why I love music notation software so much, okay? Because now I had something to practice along with. Um, and um, what you can do to practice along with it is you could set the tempo. So I click on tempo here, all right? Adjust the tempo for the speed that I'm comfortable with. Let's say I'm practicing something. I'm practicing this and this is too fast for me. I can set it to something really slow and click save. So now the speed is at 50. Turn on the metronome, and then make sure my cursor is in the beginning because that's where I want to start it, and then click play. And now I have something to play along with, so I'm going to move my microphone over so that this is a little bit louder. And we're going to click play. So, so it's it's going to play the whole thing, okay? So now you have something to play along with. Like I said, percussion, trumpets, everybody. If some of this stuff is way too high for you, okay, go back to the section I said that where you can transpose, okay? So you can raise all the notes uh, an octave higher or lower for your instrument, okay? So obviously, if you're a trumpet player, and you, you, you won't be able to play that. Okay, uh, especially like a beginning trumpet player. So you want to lower this. Um, anyway, so um, that's your 
that's how you could play along with flat.io. Okay. Another useful thing for flat.io was, you know, I remember I would come back from band class and I would go home and I go, okay, what was that one section of music I kept messing up? And what I would do is I would plug in the note, plug in those difficult sections into a music notation program. And, um, and I would play back that music notate. I would play back the part that I'd put into the music notation program, and now I know how it w how I would go, and I would realize the mistakes I was making or, um, or the problems I was having with performing something. So this is using music notation software is a great way, a great practice aid. It's almost like having a private teacher, um, along with you, telling you how to play your music. Um, kind of think about like um. Like you're reading a word and you come across a word and you don't know how it goes. And then your teacher or your parents say, oh, pronounce it like this. This is what this does. It's not exactly perfect. Like the flute sounds not the most gorgeous flute sound. The trumpet sounds not the best either. But at least you have something digital to play along with. It's always going to be in tune. The rhythm, the rhythm is always going to play back for you precisely and accurately. Um, so you have you have an, you almost have a model to follow along with when you're practicing. Okay, so this is flat.io. Plug this in, turn this into me through Schoology, and um, you know, take your other band music, plug notes in, figure out how it goes, all right? And make sure that everything that you do when you plug notes in is exact, or else you're gonna make big, huge mistakes in your playing. Um, all right, so have fun with this.